and welcome to the Gamer's Table. It is Monday, and we're reviewing Legendary. It's a deck building game. Welcome to Legendary, the Marvel deck building game. Evil masterminds like Magneto and Doctor Doom lead a horde of powerful supervillains planning dark schemes to destroy the Marvel Universe. Only you can stop them. Actually, hold all three of us, whoever's playing, can do it. But uh, leading awesome Marvel superheroes like Spider-Man, Iron Man, and Wolverine. In this game, for one to five players, each player starts with their own deck of basic hero cards. At the start of your turn, you play the top card of the villain deck, showing how villains invade the city, capture bystanders, and create special events. Then you play hero cards from your hand to generate attack, recruit points, and special abilities. You attack with your heroes. You attack with your heroes to defeat villains. You re use recruit points to recruit better heroes to add to your deck. Whenever your deck runs out of cards, you shuffle your discard pile to make a new deck, including all the new heroes you recruited. This way, your deck gets stronger and stronger over time. Build up enough power, and you can defeat the evil mastermind. But be careful. If the players don't defeat the mastermind quickly enough, then the mastermind will complete the, their dark scheme and win the game for evil. It's deck building, and deck building's fun. I really like the the way the cards interact with each other, how the heroes make sense. Each basic deck, start, you start off with uh, four um, troopers, that's their attack. They each have one attack on them. And eight uh, agents. agents, which are one buying power, one recruit power. And if, you, yeah, if you're yeah, if you KOing them early off, you're not going to be able to buy the heroes you need or attack things. So you want to maybe... At least build up your deck a little bit before you start whittling down. And the adjusting difficulty in here, the, there are ways, like there are tougher masterminds you can put in, uh, <coughs> diff more difficult schemes, which the masterminds go by to win. And there are villain groups as well. There's, what do you got, the radiation and uh, spider villains and all, all kinds of different uh, foes. So it's a deck builder. And like any deck builder, there's a lot of setup involved. Yes. The nice thing is, Setup is written here on the board for the most part. The turn order is over here, and most of the cards you have go on places on the board. Yep. So the board really wasn't necessary, but it's got nice artwork on it, and it keeps track of everything. So it keeps you... keeps things in somewhat of an order. Yeah. Yeah. And even and the I'm turn thinking, order is pretty simple too. Um, it's from Upper Deck, and it's a Marvel game, so I'm thinking they are marketing it towards a younger crowd too, where it's this kind of organization is a little better for them. Yeah. yeah. But it certainly helps when you get all those cards out there, yeah. I like the amount of variety in the game. Like, you have, in the base set, you got four different masterminds. I say base set because expansions are coming. You know they're coming. They, they've actually mentioned in the rule book that yeah. they're going to add a Spider-Man team. Yeah. The spider friends. So and the spider team the in here doesn't quite work as well with the other heroes as well, the some spider, of the other ones. The spider do. team is Spider-Man. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Stop monologuing. Well, if you read all the comic books, there's like Spider-Woman and all kinds of other you got four. Too. You got four masterminds, and you got a whole bunch of different uh, schemes, which are different plots that the mastermind is trying to pull off. And some of them are, are pretty fun. Like, there's one where we played where the bystanders were actually kill bots. And every time we got a plot twist, it just made the, the kill bots stronger. Yeah. And they got strong fast in that one, too. And the civilians just kept getting stronger. And if uh, five bystanders escaped the city, that, that would be the, the lose condition. Mm. Like, with uh, Emma Frost, she... Uh, has to do some does something bad in order to do something good because you know in the comic books or from my understanding i mean she was a villain and she turned she, she became good and uh but there's still always that mistrust and everyone didn't know so like there's always a bit of mistrust with her <clears throat> um uh wolverine he can uh, get discard a lot of wounds. He's got cards that discard wounds uh, to KO the wounds out of your deck. So that's the healing factor. You got Hulk. He gains wounds and gets stronger when he gains wounds. I mean that's very thematic as well. That's that's what Hulk does. The more you <laughs> make him angry, the stronger he gets. He just gets stronger and stronger and stronger. 
So you start up by building up the piles here. You select five of the heroes, be they Avengers, S.H.I.E.L.D., or what have you. X-Men, Spider-Man. Yeah, almost, you'll almost want to always have at least one of each kind in there because your mastermind might just say, well, you know, unless you show me an Avenger, I'm going to kick your butt every time I get one of my Master Strikes. Yeah. And if you play the game, oh, we didn't put any Avengers in the game. Oh, well, we're going to get our butts kicked regularly. So you got got um, Magneto. We mentioned this already probably or about to mention. But uh, Magneto generally fights the X-Men. And if you don't put any X-Men heroes out on the table, well, you're going to have a tougher game because in that deck, uh, Magneto's schemes or whatever, uh, a lot of times he, you need an X-Men, X-Man or whatever in your deck to counteract his negative powers and stuff like that. And if you don't have any, well, yeah, you're going to start taking a beating. You know, it's going to make the game a little harder. But there, you know, it works with all a lot of the... Uh, the villains or the masterminds and the heroes they're complementary and you know hero you know abilities and stuff like that are and then you'll build you'll pick five heroes and you'll build the villain deck and that might change depending on how many players you build a villain deck with uh, a bunch of different villains the heroes the mighty strike cards or whatever they are that the villain does master his, strike master strike yeah, like, he strike. does his special power and then a number of the scheme twist cards depending on what your scheme is they just they generally advance the scheme. Some bystanders yeah. well go in there <laughs> along with all the villains. You shuffle all that up, and that comes out randomly, and it'll either be a villain or one of those other things will happen. And you have five places along this. Everybody shows up in the sewers, climbs out through a bank to the rooftops, jumps down to the street, then goes onto a bridge. If they get away from the bridge, they escape, and then you've got to throw stuff away. You let a villain escape. What's wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of hero are you? But you got those five things and it seems like that'll be lots of time but there are times because it's a deck builder it's like i got one fight i can't beat anybody all i can do is yeah. buy a hero yeah and the next guy i got no fight all i can do is buy a hero next guy, i can't kill anybody and the thing fills up a lot faster than you would expect it to yeah and it's just conversely too you could end up you know having a bunch of good cards and just start clearing the track out you know turn after turn it depends. Like, if, like Craig says, if you can if you can whittle your deck down, then you might be getting those better cards out faster oh, you and cleaning up quicker. You definitely minimize the random. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in this one here, like when he says they escape, some of the villains have text on the bottom where there's conditions like one of them is escape, and if it escapes, you take care of that condition. As well as ambush is when it comes onto the track. You'll uh, take care of that uh, effect right away as well. But if both happen on the same turn, like the track's full and they push, the one with the escape uh, happens before the ambush effect. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah, it, the game suggests we randomly pick heroes, but they didn't really give us a way to randomize it. So what we did is we chose which heroes we wanted first, and then we randomly took whichever mastermind. So we couldn't tailor the deck to be the best suited against the mastermind. Yeah. Yeah, it was a good one where we got the uh, scheme that uh, put uh, six wounds for each player in. If the wounds run out, game's over. And one of the guys in is Hulk. And one of the Hulk cards is, you play it, everybody take a wound. Yeah. Okay, nobody picked that card up ever. <laughs> yeah. And now for the gaming news. February 21st, 2013, we'll see the new Zen Garden from Mayfair Games. Create a beautiful Zen garden with family or friends. Craft a unique landscape using tiles representing meadows, fountains, forests, and water. Illuminate it all with magical lanterns that let you transform tiles and perfect pattern. Win by being the first to create your secret pattern twice. Zen garden is an artful struggle. Seek your hidden pattern to victory while blocking and parrying your clever foes. Found your Zen quickly and claim victory. Wrapping up for Legendary. The theme is uh, fighting bad guys based on the Marvel Universe. Um, that's what this is all about. It's hard to have a game that has the theme wound tighter into it than this. I mean, if, with any deck builder, it has a theme, and most of them it actually matters. This one, it really does, because yeah. it's Marvel. And the powers are going to be different based on the different guys. Mm -hmm. um, easy to play. 
Yeah, well, it's pretty. Easy I think a little win. too easy to play in the base. Well, game. easy to win in the yeah. base <laughs> game. Yeah. yeah, and the turn order is pretty simple and, and too. fun to play. It's a deck builder, but there's stuff going on, and sometimes your hand of cards isn't good. It's like any deck builder, but with the villain track and it's moving villains along, and guys are escaping. There's more going on than just chaining your cards and 50 cards. I got 40 buys and 30 actions, and now I play another throne room. There's a little more to this. I give Legendary a 7.5. Pretty much agree with uh, everything Craig, uh, Craig said. Uh, I might give it a little bit higher score. Like, it is pretty easy, uh, but like they said, there's ways to up the difficulty in this. But if you're always wanting to make it more difficult, you're pretty, probably going to get the same combinations of masterminds and schemes in there all the time because you want to play the hardest ones. And so, yeah, expansions for this would be great if they could make some uh, more difficult uh, well, they're, they're schemes coming. and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Chris, yeah, I'm pretty sure they, they're coming, but that would be very nice to, uh, addition to this. I really enjoy this one. I, I like comic books and stuff. Uh, I like the artwork on this game. Everything I like this about this. It is a bit easy, yeah, at the moment, but uh, we're used to deck builders and... We've pretty much picked up on this. There are some tips in the book, too, that say, you know, stick to the same hero classes all the time so those symbols keep coming up and you can chain them better. And it yeah, makes a big difference if you do that. If you vary up your deck too much, you know, they're not going to complement each other as well. I'm going to give Legendary an 8.5. I like this game. Uh, I think it's great. The theme works pretty well. I like the way the heroes and the villains interact with each other. I enjoy this game. I love the Marvel Universe, and a lot of the hero decks really suit the way the character actually is. Like, uh, Deadpool is kind of a... Yeah, anti-hero. Anti-hero, so I mean, a lot of his stuff is maybe not so good. Yeah, you gotta take the good (laughs) with the bad with him on a lot of the cards. And same with uh, Emma Frost. She's got a lot of, you know, okay, I I gotta get this benefit, but I gotta do something that's not so great. Like, the one card draw a new card from the uh, villain deck. It's like, I don't know, that might not be a good idea to do. Mm-hmm. But we've we've played with the uh, the base difficulty, but as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine more difficulty levels above the base difficulty that they have in the book. So, I mean, if you're finding the game too easy, we could easily make it tougher. <laughs> I give Legendary an eight. Okay, that's it for this episode of the Gamers Table. Tune in next week where we review another game. Because that's what we do. make it tougher <laughs> <laughs> but um but uh, yeah you, you just well, threw me off i had <laughs> <laughs> poke <laughs>